quiz is very bound up with its history of its inventor, Genrik Altschuler, perhaps one of the most brilliant engineers of the 20th century, but really unknown outside the Twiz community. Now, he was born in 1926, which means he just missed the Second World War, which was probably very good for science and technology and everything that Twiz has given us, because so many other Russians perished, about 26 million. So here he is, young man, 1946, in this rather grim society of Russia then. And the good thing about a war, the only good thing probably, is that we've had many inventions, many innovations, all constraints are off, and people have just been solving problems. So as soon as the war is over, people want to write these solutions down and get them patented. And so he was in perhaps a very exciting place in 1946 as a patent officer. And he was looking at the kind of inventions that were coming through that would help the Russian Navy. And he looked at all these patterns and said, this is really strange, but they're all the same. And what's happened in the last 50 years is that science and engineering has become much bigger. 50 years ago, anyone who was a scientist or an engineer would have had some idea of the whole area of science and engineering. But now, there's so much more that we've uncovered that we have to now specialise. So we've divided up science and engineering into specialist areas, chemistry, physics, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, whatever. And within each speciality, we've written languages. So mechanical engineers write their patents in mechanical engineering language and technical terms. And chemists write in chemistry and physicists write in physics. And what we've done is we've created like a Tower of Babel, because we don't understand each other. We only understand people who are in the same tower as us, the same specialist group. And so when we're looking for answers to our problems, we only look in our own area. If we're mechanical engineers, we only look at the patents that have been written by other mechanical engineers. But actually, many chemists and physicists and electrical engineers and mechanical engineers are actually duplicating each other's work. And they're, they're coming up with the same problems and the same solutions, but because they're written in these different languages, we're not seeing the similarities. So if we were to reduce them to their basics, take out all the details, say what are the fundamental concepts at the basis of each patent, then we would see that there are very few solutions. He published a paper saying this, but then there was a huge rebellion in the patent community, which was very brave, with Stalin in charge of Russia. And it came about because at the end of the First World War, the Americans had taken much of the German IP and used it in America. Things like aspirin, invented in Germany, became something that was seen as the spoils of war and given to American companies. And after the Second World War, they went back to get the German IP again, more spoils of war but found that the Russians had taken all the, all the German patent records. So they went to the Russians and said, we want to buy all the German IP that you've got. And they agreed to swap corn for the German IP because the Russian farming system wasn't working and people were starving. But the patent community said, no, this is too valuable, even for food, even for food for starving people. Don't let the Americans have the German IP, we need it. And they signed petitions and they had protests. And many of them were arrested, including Altshuler, apparently at this time. And he was sentenced to death for inventor sabotage. But then that was changed to a 25-year hard labour sentence in a gulag in Siberia. So he went to Siberia. Young man. Absolutely tragic situation. But apparently he was very charismatic, very interesting. He had an absolutely wonderful memory. So when he get, got to the gulag, he said, I'm not going to work because most gulags were just slave labour camps. So they said, right, we've got one place we put you, anyone who won't work, and that's we put you in with the criminals because gulags had criminals and people who had just displeased the state in some way. Many intellectuals were there in gulags. But the criminal section was a very dangerous place be locked in and had high walls around it. So they, they put him in with the criminals and more or less said, we'll come back and collect your body in the morning. But he survived. The next morning they arrived and found he was sat in the hut 
with these criminals telling stories. And he was invoking a very old story of survival, Scheherazade. He kept telling them stories, he had this wonderful memory, he remembered all the stories he'd ever learned. And he would get to the punchline of the story and say, well, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you the, the end tomorrow. So he survived another day. And eventually, when he was taken away from the criminal area, they put him in the hospital to work. And there, he said he had his university of life. He said that whenever he met anyone, he would say, tell me what you know. And he said he learnt about so many things, Italian opera, physics, chemistry, engineering, Russian literature, poetry. So many things from all the intellectuals that were locked up in the gulag with him. And he said to them, I think I've seen something in the patent database. I think I've seen that there are about a hundred answers to everything. And what we've got to do is go and look hard at all, all the paints, strip out all the detail and see how many answers there are. Well, Stalin died in March 1953 and they were released not long after that. Many of them, not the criminals. And they went out to see if he was right. They studied his community that he built in the Gulag, studied as many patents as possible. And the first thing they found of these hundred solutions were 40 ways of solving a contradiction. And this is what they, they based Triz on. And they built Triz over the next 20 years. And it finally left Russia in the early 90s when the first Triz masters arrived in Europe, in the USA, in the Far East, and made such difference to so many major companies.